Welcome back to the Contact Lens Institute's YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Stephanie Wu from the Contact Lens Institute. And today we're gonna to be answering a question that has come in a million times from a million different patients, which is blood in the eye. What do I need to know and what do I need to do about it? So the most common thing when you have blood in your eye, it's actually on the white part of the eye. This may happen to you, it may have happened to a friend, it may have happened to somebody you've seen, this is the most common thing when somebody says they have blood in their eye. It's usually involving the white part of the eye, also known as the sclera. So what happens is the white part of the eye is covered with a clear membrane called the conjunctiva, and that has a lot of really tiny blood vessels. You can't really see them from far away, but if you get up close to someone's eye or you look in the microscope, you can see these little blood vessels. So what happens is one of those blood vessels ruptures for a variety of reasons. And then what happens is that the blood spreads across the white part of the eye, wherever the damage occurred. And then it leaves this really giant red spot in the eye. And it's really concerning for most people. If this has happened to you, you know, if you wake up and you look at yourself in the mirror in the morning, you have a giant bloody eye. It is incredibly concerning and you call your eye doctor right away to see what's going on. Most of the time, this is a, a very benign issue and it will go away with time. The reason that subconjunctival hemorrhages happen is there's a lot of reasons. Number one is trauma. So if, if you got hit in the eye from, let's say a ball or you were in a fight or you tripped and you hit your head, some of those types of things, that can cause some damage to the blood vessels and lead them to rupture, which will create that blood in the eye. Other things can be from blood thinners. So a lot of my patients that are elderly, that are on blood thinners like warfarin or Coumadin, those are different things that can cause the blood vessels to become leaky and the clotting is not as quick. So a lot of my elderly patients suffer from subconjunctival hemorrhages. Another option could be just from spontaneous. Some patients, they have extra pressure to the eye that, that happens in just a very quick few minutes or seconds, such as constipation, or you are doing something where the, the eye increased in pressure suddenly. Sometimes that even can cause the blood vessel to burst. Recently, I had a patient that was vomiting a lot and she developed a subconjunctival hemorrhage because the eye pressure was so increased because she was constantly vomiting from the stomach flu. So those are just a few reasons. Um, high blood pressure can also cause it. There's a bunch of different things that can cause blood in the eye, but if you do see it, you definitely want to see your eye doctor to make sure that it's not affecting other parts of the eye. If you have a subconjunctival hemorrhage from trauma, this is incredibly important to see your eye doctor because what can happen is not only the front of the eye could have blood, but the middle or the back part of the eye can also have blood and that can be sight threatening. If you are developing subconjunctival hemorrhages all the time, let's say you're getting them once a month, that is also not normal. In that case, we'll need to perform some blood tests to check the clotting factors in the blood. But most of the time, these types of issues as far as blood in the eye from a subconjunctival hemorrhage is really nothing to worry about. There's really no eye drops or any other home remedies that will make this go away faster. It really just takes time. And I always tell patients that it's like a bruise. So it changes color. So first it starts off really, really bright red, and then it becomes more of a dull red. Then it can even change colors and become kind of brown or yellow, things that you would normally see a bruise on your skin, kind of similar to the eye. So it usually goes away within a few days to a few weeks, depending on how large the issue was. But again, it's usually nothing to worry about. It's not going to affect your eye long term. I hope that was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be the first to know about all the different videos that we have. Bye.